Today on the Sonic Experience, we're talking about sound quality. It helps to have a basic understanding of how sound waves work in the physical world before you get into how the digital world represents them. So here's a link to my video on phase and the physics of sound if you haven't already seen that. Sound is naturally continuous analog information. So in order to store this wave of continuous information on a computer, it needs to be converted to numbers that represent this information. Each number represents a discrete point in the analog wave as it goes up and down for amplitude information and left to right for timing information. Your computer has to play a game of connect the dots with these numbers to reconstruct the sound wave in a language it can understand. The extent to which digitized sound matches the original sound depends on the accuracy at which the computer samples this analog information. There's two variables that determine this accuracy, bit depth and sample rate. Bit depth determines how many numbers your computer has available to represent this up and down motion or amplitude of the sound wave. The amplitude of the wave actually has to be rounded or quantized to the nearest number your bit depth has available. So let's say hypothetically we had 10 numbers to represent the up and down motion of a wave and the wave actually peaked at say 8.6. It would have to be rounded to the nearest point your bit depth has available, which in this case would be 9. So the higher the bit depth, the less these numbers will have to be rounded. A higher bit depth also increases your signal to noise ratio, which in turn allows for more dynamic range. One thing to note is 24 bit doesn't mean there's 24 numbers available. Adding one bit doubles the resolution, adding two quadruples it, and so on. So in reality, 24 bit has over 16 million numbers available to represent where exactly the amplitude of a wave was at a specific point in time. This brings us to the subject of sample rates. You could think of a sample rate like the frame rate of a camera. Sample rate determines how many snapshots per second are being taken to represent these changes in amplitude over time. A very slow sample rate can't reproduce the higher frequencies in the spectrum because the changes in amplitude are happening so fast that the sample rate can't keep up. As it turns out, the math says you can double the frequency to find out how high a sample rate you'd need to accurately represent the frequency. So for the frequency of, say, 800 hertz, you'd need a sample rate of 1.6 kilohertz to capture the wave's up and down motion without audible flaws. Well, the highest frequency we can hear is about 20 kilohertz, which means a 40 kilohertz sample rate is enough. So a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz has been chosen as something of a standard in the audio world. The extra 4.1 kilohertz on top of what's necessary is there as kind of a buffer zone to help the audio maintain its integrity during format conversions and other things. I'd say having over 16 million quantization points in your bit depth is way more than necessary. This many quantization points allows for a whopping 144 decibels of dynamic range, which is way past the threshold of pain. And judging by the math and my ears, taking over 44,000 snapshots per second is more than enough. So a bit depth of 24 and a sample rate of 44.1 will easily be sufficient for producing professional results. Standard CD quality is only 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz but it doesn't hurt to start with a higher bit depth for more dynamic range on the way in, then you can convert down later. There are certain situations that you might need to use a different audio resolution. For example, 24-bit and 48 kilohertz is the standard audio resolution for DVD quality. Why is it higher? Well, the ratio between video frame rate and the corresponding audio sample rate apparently actually matters. So that's something to keep in mind when working with audio for video. I have another illustration here that might help you better understand the whole process from A to Z. So firstly, the instrument, whatever it may be, causes pressure waves in the air. This analog information causes the diaphragm of a microphone to move in and out. The microphone sends this analog information as a wave of voltage. When your interface receives this wave of voltage, it converts it into digital information that your computer can understand. This is where your bit depth and sample rate come in. Once this information is received by the computer, it can be stored, edited, and prepared for commercial distribution. Once distributed, 
the playback device converts the digital signal back into an analog voltage signal which travels through the speaker cable causing the speakers to vibrate and finally the vibration of the speakers cause waves of air pressure to move your eardrums. Keep in mind the higher you set your audio resolution the longer your lag or latency will be. From my experience, lag longer than 0.14 seconds can cause issues when trying to monitor what you're recording. Alright everyone, hope that helps. If you want to keep learning with me, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.